it gives you the custom slick theory installation it gives you um, what was I going to say? Uh, slick through our installation. It gives you test files. It gives you drivers. It gives you everything you need to print. Um, but for now, uh, I don't know if I want to show you guys all the all my uh, files. Edigus Mengelberg, thanks for the donation. Thanks for the one year donation. Every little bit helps out a whole lot. And I believe we, we already on the topic of tips and donations um, my session expired on stream tip awesome <laughs> doesn't need a two-factor no okay um let's just let's just catch up on on stream tip donations so nobody feels left out um igus mingleberg um 14 years old, live in the Netherlands and learned a lot of 3D printing from you. I built my own Porsche i3 and busy and I'm busy with designing a video one. Thank you for your support. Well, thank you for your support my way. Um, that is my job now to create um, content that helps all of you as much as possible, whether it's reviews or guides or, or anything like that. Um, five years from Bradley Crowder. Really enjoyed the stream. Loved the videos. Very informative. Informative. Cheers from Canada. Mika, I love you coming if you're following your Sunday stream, too, so continue like that, will do. Alright, and I think that should be just, you know, so no one feels left out. Um, just gonna catch up on those. Alright, so what should we print? What should we print? That is the question. Um, I've heard, um, I've heard we should print that, that yellow mouse thing. At that, uh, what's it called, Pikachu? Or the frog, in honor of the frog. That does sound like a good idea. You know, so, so we have some sort of a uh, of a benchmark, I guess. Let's do that. Where's my sc screen cap? There you go. Oops. There's a little innocent tree frog. Um, we are going to print him in bri bright red. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the Pikachu print in red would be sort of weird. You know, but uh, yeah. There's the frog we're gonna print with. Prusa PET. We're just gonna say that is Prusa PET um, because I mean the, the, the settings are sort of uh, <laughs> the same with any PLA uh, PT. What, what am I saying? PT PLA. Prusa PLA. There we go. Um, P, PLA is pretty much the same stuff uh, either way. So i3 mark 2 with z hop 0.2 millimeter normal setup i don't think we're gonna go for the 0.1 um, right away just in normal settings um i did not change the settings that i changed this morning where i printed the um, spare parts so we still got the 10 percent grid infill two perimeters four solid layers top and three bottom so that all sounds pretty well i'm i am still gonna enable the extra perimeters if needed just because we've got some pretty severe overhangs right on its belly, but otherwise we should be pretty good. All right, so let's export that. I'm not gonna change any diameters or, or um, export settings. Just get that tree frog on the SD card and move it over here just to check on the on the other frog. That is still looking fabulous. Get something to eat? Yeah, I can tell. You've been gone for a while. I oh camera's going black. Because I am pulling on the HDMI cable. I am terribly sorry. Well, 
Okay, so while that is saving to SD card, um, let's get that safely removed. I'm done. Too many tripods. This way. Card inserted. Here we go. So I still, I can still um, run. Did I wipe it down with alcohol? I should just, you know, just for good measure. One more time. There we go. So that's the area where the frog is going to be printed. That's the priming area from there. tree frog so I think or I guess relatively sure um, that I can still live adjust the Z height um, while uh, I can still adjust the Z height while, while this first layer is printing that shouldn't be limited to the um, Z calibration test code but I think we should be relatively well set on that front No tape on the bed, well, yes tape on the bed. This thing comes with a PEI sheet pre-applied. You can actually see the edges right here and right there. So it's a big fat PCB heater, a three millimeter thick PCB with no aluminum or glass on top, but only the PEI sheet, which I think is a marvelous adhesive for any heated bed. Um, we've got a bunch of great properties that uh, really work out well for a 3D printer. So we are heating the bed and the hot end. Why is it Well, you probably missed it, but uh, I tried to have Nürnberger. Kostbrauwurst and wrecked my uh, Delta printer's heated bit. Ooh, good job, my bot! Currywurst? Oh, that's the wrong end of Germany for me. Um, do I leave the... Uh, <laughs> Do you leave the heated bed warm or cold when removing the part? Well, it depends. Um, some filaments will uh, will actually remove much better when cold. Some re will remove much better when hot. Um, I generally prefer removing them cold because if the um, if the heated bed ends up, you know, pulling up ever so slightly, you can always like squish it back down but if you remove it cold and or, or if you remove it hot and it ends up too sti sticking too well you do end up damaging something so yeah let's just see how well this does and it does look pretty good The little feetsies are looking relatively good. I think it's at almost the exact perfect height. It might. No, we good. We good. We good.
Yeah, so print time, let me just check the... Uh, that is really up close. Um, let me just check what uh, slick we are. Estimated. I forgot. Slick here does not do print time estimation, so let's try gcode.ws. No, the stream is not frozen, it should not be frozen. Um, but I'm seeing I might have to... Um, I might have to turn up the camera's exposure a bit more. It's like, it's like really dark. There we go, let's bump up the ISO one more. It might be all noise and stuff now, but better than being underexposed. Yeah, so for next Sunday stream, um, like I said in the beginning of this stream, um, I am planning on, on doing like a, a 3D printing basics uh, live walkthrough of basically um, how you design something, how you print something, um, you know, what, what a slicer is, what, um, what the job of the firmware is and all that sort of stuff. Um, probably not for the same guys that are watching today, my camera probably just shook a bit. Um, probably not for the same guys that are watching today, but for a uh, for an audience that is interested in 3D printing but kind of doesn't really know what it's. Oh, that didn't work out. Uh, but kind of doesn't know what it's all about yet. So um, yeah, it's going to be a very different thing. It was more of a of a software tutorial and, and design philosophies and Q and A session. Um, so yeah, um, estimate for Tree Frog is 53 minutes and 27 seconds for um, this exact uh, G code on gcode.ws. So while that is printing, um, let me just show you this. If you guys don't, okay, that was F5, awesome. Um, if you guys don't, ah, uh, don't crash. I missed the target. If you guys don't know gcode.ws, G -code it's basically an, an online gcode analyzer um, that gives you print time estimates, um, filament use estimates, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, for example, that is where the 53 minutes and 27 seconds and 5.79 grams came from. I uh, get a 2D and a 3D preview. Um, it's the, this is this is by the way the same um, the same 2D preview that Octoprint is based on. So it might look familiar to you guys, um, but yeah, just just in case you didn't know, gcode.ws really nice. Um, G-code preview site um, you should definitely know about. Looks like the belly is lifting. Yes, it does, but it is not. It's just it's just a really um, it's just a really steep overhang. So 
if I actually move you guys here around 8 bits. And you might not get a better perspective, but you might get some better views on um, you know, what the exact parts look like. And it does not look like anything is lifting there or anything is failing on that front. <laughs> Joe, all right. Uh, Joe Prusa, thanks for being here as a support, basically. Um, <laughs> thanks thanks for, for shouting me at and uh, Making me do the right thing for the build. Um, I think it worked out pretty well. I think it it um, yeah. <laughs> I think it, it it was one hell of a ride again. Uh, it does work. It does work. Um, this is shitty Chinese pla. Well, it, it is. It is not shitty Chinese pla. It is maybe. Um, Subpar um, Taiwanese PLA. This is the Atom 3D PLA. Um, just what I had hanging around. It doesn't look that bad. Uh, yeah, it's a bit stringy. It is the filament, I guess. Um, but so far. There is no curling going on, um, but I mean, we, we are also, keep, keep that in mind, we are also zoomed in pretty damn far. Um, 0.4 nozzle, it is, I believe, a standard E3D hardened with the 1, 2, 2 dot, 3 dot. So 3 dots on the nozzle, I believe that is the um, 0.4 millimeter version. What's print speed? Let's just check the default slick fair settings. Um, print settings, so speed. So slick fair says speed for perimeters 40 millimeters a second, small perimeters 20, extra perimeters 30, uh, infill 60 millimeters a second, solid infill 40, top solid infill 20, support material 50, bridges 20, and gap fill 40 millimeters a second. Um, I guess that should be uh, all these speed numbers you should need. Um, but one thing that, of course, um, plays into that is cooling settings. I believe that is an filament tab. Yep, so we've got a minimum layer time of 25 seconds so that might also be um, something that is slowing the entire print down so Joe's, Joe's asking how do I like the printer um, well let's let's start with the other one first um, yes I know you shipped me some nice film and um, I don't think this one is printing that badly I mean how can the how can the MK2 not print something nicely um, you know, the, the MK2 so far, so um, let's just look at, at what we're getting here. So let's, let's look at, at this guy over here. Um, of course, I mean, this is metallic filament. This is um, a, a filament that hides uh, layer seams, but is glossy enough to uh, show any imperfections. And I do have to say, this thing looks perfect. This thing looks pretty much absolutely perfect. Um, it's got the it's got the Ethernet V6 in there. It's got um, a kinematic system that seems to be really spot on, precise. I can't make out any ripples. Any um, I can't make out any ripples. Any um, Z wobble. You know, attributing that to the um, the stepper choices. Um, it is reliable. The firmware is awesome. Uh, even though you do still have to read the manual. Yes. Um, 
the firmware is absolutely epic i think you guys did an awesome job uh rewriting good old marlin um to to include all the features you got there including i mean xy um auto squaring it doesn't sound as cool as it is it, it, it sounds less cool on paper than it actually is in real life you know just seeing the printer home down on those spots and finding them and uh then telling you hey you know you suck at assembling a, a 3d printer you know what but i can fix that for you if you want to um so that is that is absolutely epic um so far build experience i mean it, build experience was pretty good it, it was not hard per se um having a stream on the you know on, on one screen over there and, and uh, interacting with that was kind of hard at the same time but that is the same with every uh, job you're supposed to do and uh, talk to people at the same time so so far I am really really happy with this machine so far um, I mean price wise you can tell it's not like a, a two and a half thousand euro ultimaker it's you know printed parts don't don't scream like hey I'm like a, a super high-end professional machine but that's not what the uh, what the MK2 is trying to be, right? Um, so, so far, I mean, really, really happy. Um, of course, I mean, I will dig in uh, into the, all the details and all the, the detailed print performance things with the reviews and test parts and and uh, <laughs> and whatever else there is to test about the printer. Um, and then form an, a, a complete, more, more complete opinion. But from what I've been seeing so far, uh, the MK2 would be getting a solid 10 out of 10 from me at this very moment. You know, even though you might complain about, you know, it's got a, it's got a, a threaded rod frame on the bottom. What the heck is up with that? It's 2016. Come on, but. Really, if it, if it works, if you set it down and it calibrates itself and it works and it doesn't shake while printing, and it def definitely does not shake while printing, um, then I see nothing wrong with that. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that 3.1.0 firmware. Um, it gets rid of manuals and stuff, so <laughs> that is, uh, is going to be much appreciated. So, yeah, lots of, lots of... Uh, also, the details sprinkled in um, the way the X carriage is uh, wire managed, for example, the way with you got the, the face in the back there, and um, the uh, you know filament as a strain relief. I am a big advocate of that. I love seeing it implemented. Um, if only the ZX has also had that um, that strain relief. Maybe in the future, an update. Um, the Z wire loom will also have that uh, that bit of filament as a guide in there you know the z-axis does get the least amount of, of travel but i think it would still be nice to, to see that in there as well all right um yeah i think we're done ah <sighs> i think we're pretty much done um yeah, one more thing on the assembly. Yes, I did not follow the manual 100%. I, I did try. Um, I did try to follow it as, as much as possible. Um, one thing with the manual I would complain about would be the pictures or the, the images. Um, having a bit higher quality images in there would be awesome. Um, bigger ones that they give you a bit of a, a, of a better detail view that aren't that round out in the, in the dark areas but overall i mean i got it together um if you'd have like the coordination to uh to also have a a web browser open at the same time and browse through those pages it's probably going to make your experience a whole lot easier uh, because the the uh, the Rizuki version does have much much too uh, much much too much much better images on there um, but in my specific case you know interacting with chat with you guys also by the way huge thanks for for sticking around um, interacting with chats managing OBS studio uh, managing what you're doing on the uh, on the assembly side of things 
And then also browsing through the uh, through the assembly menu, I think would have been too much. So yeah, ending like last time. Finish print, light out, then power off. Um, I don't know. Well, we have two more prints that well, we have two t these two prints that need to be finished. Um, So the, the other Linda in the back that you guys are seeing uh, on the big screen is at 96%. So you can you can you can already see the the tips of uh, of the frog being printed there. Um, so we're almost done there, 96, and this one up here should be like 40 more minutes, I guess. Double check how long that's already printing. Oh no, it's 18 minutes in and it's at uh, 44%. So our red print is like uh, 35 minutes in. Yeah, minimum layer height. Um, I think these two prints should finish up in the near future. So I'm uh, I'm just going to stick around and, and re-chat for a minute. Um, so question on minimum layer height. Uh, on this exact printer, well, um, you know, minimum layer height really isn't that much of a property of the printer itself. It's more of a how much pain are you willing to take to um, <laughs> how much pain are you willing to take to 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 get there. Um, so. Typically, most printers, most printers that have um, that have a, a decent mechanics setup, will do 0 0.1 or 0 0.05, so 50 micron and 20 micron layers. Even. Um, I am very confident the, the MK2 would do 20 micron layers, but no one is crazy enough to print to actually print at that layer height. Even 50 microns is already uh, really painfully slow. So technically. As low as you want to go, I'd say. So minimum layer height, I don't think is uh, is is that much of a criteria for for any 3D printer. Uh, so let me try one more thing while we're watching it. While we have these two colors on here, um, I'm hoping that's not going to show the menu. No, it will not. Okay. Well, let's see if we can get this one tuned in. So if we say, I want the genuine Prusa orange, that's about, you know, that's roughly what it looks like um, in real life. That's, that's what the colors look like to me. So the red is sort of slightly bleach red. And the uh, the Prusa parts are actually like all fluorescent orange, so that is what it what it looks like to me. That looks good. Maybe maybe the orange is a bit more more vibrant. Um, crank it up even more. I don't know. Put the webcam on as well. It's it is sort of a, a slightly faded red. That better? No, not quite. Um, but like I said, the the orange is actually really a, a really fluorescent, vibrant orange. That that looks that looks about right. Um. So this guy is the, the same tree frog we printed last weekend. Um, it's more pink than red. Well, it is. It is this 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 slightly non um, non full red color. Um, yeah. So the question, something that, that keeps coming up. Um, what about Core X Y? People keep asking, is this better than Core X Y? Well. 
4 x y is just another um, another idea of a uh, of a kinematic system. Core XY is not that does not automatically make a better or worse printer. It's just it just works differently. He can build a really good Core XY printer, or he can build a really bad Core XY printer. It's all up to the details in the end. Um, so yeah, my monitor is calibrated. I have no idea what OBS uh, does with the colors because sometimes I see colors that do not match what I want to see. Yeah, 24 hour, um, 24 hour show. I don't know what we should be doing. This versus HBOT, yeah, same question. This versus Core XY, this versus Delta. Um, it's not wow they're filming the squeaky again it's not about the exact um it's not about the kinematics platform it is about how you choose to implement it how you choose to build it um you can build a good and bad printer either way you can use any kinematics platform and build a good or a bad machine really really simple does h build increase precision for the steppers no it does not Yes, the red seems redder all of a sudden. I did crank up the redness on that. And actually, I'm going to crank up the redness on this one as well. Just to get them to match. There we go. Crank the redness. Yeah, um, so one thing I'm noticing is... Um, the kit machine seems a lot quieter than the pre-assembled one, um, even in the power or regular mode. Um, which is interesting, at the very least. I'm gonna have to look into what what's up with the pre-assembled one. Um, but uh, yeah, there, there seems to be a very strong difference. Um, if I go into um, the settings on the kit one, oh, okay, so it is, it is by default set on the silent, uh, on the silent mode, so that would explain it. So by default, it is on silent. Um, no real explanation why the. Uh, the settings will be different on the kit and pre-assembled one. So if we, if you get one, that should be something to check. I I don't see any downs downside to the sound mode yet. Um, lower accelerations on the same kinematics platform always get you better print, or most of the times get you better prints. So really no downside there. Um, yeah. So we are at 58% for the red print and at 98% for the silver print. Just check back there. That is still looking amazingly nice. Mm. How do you get rid of ringing? Tighten your belts and uh, make sure your kinematic system is stiff enough. Also lower jerk and acceleration very simple um, these sound a lot quieter than all of Angus's printers so the one on my desk right here the one oh I guess I, I'm so far zoomed in you guys can actually see me um, the one that's that's printing the red frog right now is um, oh that's plus two okay so this one is sitting on the desk, which is a, a whoops, like a one and a half inch or, or four or five centimeter thick um, kitchen work surface, basically on a on a stand. And the other one is back here on the shelf, which is three quarter inch or two centimeter, one point nine centimeter uh, MDF. And that one back there is making a lot more noise even though it's also in the silent mode. Um, I do blame it on the shelf, I do blame it on the way um, 
that everything is set up there. Um, but in general, this one right here is the one that, that I built in the kit. Is a lot quieter than the other one. And to give you a, a bit of a perspective there, um, this one here is almost inaudible. This would be like so. Uh, this would be like so quiet for. <sighs> words, words are hard at 10:30 p.m. Um, and this one is like at the at the very low noise tier, I'd say. It's um, I wouldn't call it bothering if it's um, like in a in a in an office sort of space. Um, but the one back here on the shelf that would that would bother me a lot. Um, but in, in general, I do not recommend printing in the same room you're in, like I'm doing right now. You shouldn't do that. Um, just because particle count and, and whatnot and uh, you know not not too good um, yeah why no why no bearing some egos well egos bearings are kind of cool they're kind of nice and uh, you know just just work but for them to just work, you do have to use them exactly as Ego specifies, with the exact um, tolerance, press fits, um, or use the really expensive aluminum shell ones. And uh, yeah, there, there, there are a few combinations that work really well, and there are a few that work really well, but give you a lot of slop. Um, if you do it right, if you do it um, like Lotspot does, you are gonna get good results with them but it is still harder to use them properly than it is to use um, LMATUs properly. Um, I did make a video on that topic, should you be using Egos bushings and that has all the details in there and I think the reasoning is pretty much the same on, um, the, on the original Prusa printers. Would I recommend this or the Ultimate Original Plus Kit for a beginner? Um, I would actually recommend the Prusa Mark II, uh, Prusa I, the original Prusa i3 Mark II over the original, over the Ultimate Original Plus. Don't ask me for reasons, it's late. But um, I, I feel like you're getting a much more modern printer with the Prusa version, but as always, get the get the genuine Prusa i3. Do not get a Chinese uh, i3 clone for a lower price. If it, even if it looks like a better, uh, even if it looks like a better deal, it is not. It is a completely different machine. If you buy one that says Prusa i3 on AliExpress for two hundred fifty dollars, so. Um, Right, so the question is, is the dr uh, frog getting uh, getting any sort of seams or stuff? Um, I am not seeing seams here, I'm not seeing seams there. There are a few tiny dots. And it seems like the, the seam is actually running up the throat here, so... For, for a tiny bit, but in general, I cannot. Um, I cannot make out any of the typical seams, at least on the Adalinda print. Um, where can you get this printer? On Prusa3D.org. Um, I can print links because I am mod. Um, you guys are asking about the Dynamo 3D, you know what, because you've made it all the way till the end um, I'm gonna share the, 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 the review video of the Dynamo 3D with you guys um, It is not dressed up yet 
Um, it does not have subtitles yet. It doesn't have info cards yet. It is. I uploaded that till like 1 a.m. tonight. So basically yesterday evening until like very late in the night I uploaded that. I am going to change that to unlisted and throw you guys the link in chat in a second. So that is going to go live today or tomorrow. Um, we'll have to see how much that clashes with today's stream. But if you want to guy, if you guys want to want to watch it, share it, do whatever you, you guys want to do with it. Um, let me just share that real quick and pause that. Pause that. Hmm. So there is the uh, D3D review. I'm hoping that link is clickable. Okay, frog is done. Let's have a look at the frog, shall we? How did we lose the uh, the secondary camera? Oh, we switched. Okay, I typed the number. Um, so the big frog is done. Now the the small frog is still uh, sort of printing, but let's have a look at what we are getting right here so okay so it's still warm I don't want to pull it off yet um, but I mean okay oh yeah. doesn't that like look pretty much perfect here Of course, these little strings are popular, um, retract strings. Um, again, you guys were commenting that um, I was printing too hot at 210 degrees Celsius when I should have printed at 200. Um, that would explain it. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let this one cool off a bit more. I'm gonna let it cool down to like 30 or 25 degrees Celsius. And then I'm gonna pull it off the print and um, give it just a, a bit um, give, give you a quick walk around so while that is cooling down the small frog is starting to come out Let's lower that a bit So there is that frog. And so there, there's a, a super tiny amount of, of ringing, of, of ribbing on the, uh, on the belly. But that might be A, the filament, or B, you know, the filament pulling on, um, on the extruder or anything like that. Um, But of course, it's also a pretty brutal, brutal, brutal overhang. Um, the question is, how do we... It's at 42 degrees, okay. I, I guess I should be pulling on it yet. Hug note, flying frogs, yeah. Let's get that HMI cable loose so we can walk you around what this print looks like. So, that room is so white, yes. It is relatively white. So there is the, uh, the snout right there. Um, in case you didn't know, the, the Adelinda actually has a complete hole to the bottom, I believe. All the way through from the snout through the throat down into its chest. I don't know if it actually goes all the way through, but it, it does have some sort of, of functionality, I believe. 
So over here, the wings. Focused up. There we go. Um, I don't know about you, but there is like there is no artifacting on that at all. There is the ever so slightest hint of like a, a filament inconsistency up here. But in general, that is looking really, really sweet. Even the the enormous overhang on the belly down here, um, all the detail on the claws, that stuff all looks like it did come out really, really well. So, yeah, awesome job, who should print this, who should read that word, come, sorry, who should read your come. Um, so I am going to try to pull it off again. Uh, eh. I don't want to risk it. Don't want to risk it. Be careful with the fingers of the dragon. Yeah. Um, switch to cameras. Oh yeah, I forgot to do that. Haha. <laughs> um, So while that frog, that silver frog, isn't doing all that much over there, let's move you guys back to the um, to the other frog and actually give you a peek from the other side, right there. So this is just the back side of that ex same exact frog. And same here, so it is oh, well, it is looking very, very good. So I can just switch perspectives right there. Yay! Um, uh, dragon layers are at 0 0.2 millimeters, both of them. There's the, there's the back of the frog and the front of the frog. Um, <laughs> the <fucking> manual, yeah. <laughs> mm. Joe tried to tell me for, for print removal. Oh. I thought we were done with the manual. Removing objects from the printer. When, print, when printing is finished, let the nozzle and heat bed cool down before removing the printed object. Well, I know that. Um, <laughs> you don't need to tell me. Uh, always handle the printed objects when temperature of bed and nozzle drop to room temperature. When the bed is hot, objects are very hard to remove. Pull the bed towards you and remove the object gently. Okay. If you experience any trouble with removing the object, especially the small ones, you can use a flat tool like a spatula with rounded corners to prevent damage to your PEI. Slide the spatula over the corner under the corner of the object and gently push until the print pops off. I knew all of that, actually. Um, I just choose to ignore it at times. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the kit is... The kit is printing pretty awesomely as well. Um, so, I mean, after all, it is the exact same printer. Um, the stringiness, yes, we, we can attribute that to the uh, to the filament used. Um, but also keep in mind, the kit print that you're seeing right now has the exact same uh, layer height. It has the exact same 0.2 millimeter layers as we saw um, on the other print. It also has a filament that is much more contrasty on camera, so the, the, the layers and any sort of imperfections are way amplified. And also the, um, the print is much, much smaller. This is 
So this is like five centimeters across, five, uh, two, two inches or so. The other print is, um, how tall is it? 20 centimeters, so like seven inches? Uh, I don't do math. Uh, 15 centimeters, so like six inches tall. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's definitely a different scale of the print. Um, so no worries on, on any sort of, of quality differences you might be seeing on camera. Again, like I said, the red does show um, any artifacts much, much stronger than um, uh, than the silver, than the metallic silver. So, yeah. I'm just gonna let this one finish. Um, no need to use inches well it is uh, 10 50 p.m right here so it's mostly u.s viewers time and u.s viewers tend to prefer inches uh to centimeters just for for convenience reasons wow that is still solidly stuck um tend to prefer inches to centimeters for convenience reasons and um for that reason, I, I do mention the, the inch length there to make it easier for uh, for those viewers. Um, <laughs> everything is a frog now. And as people are calling it the white frog right there. Froggy the white. Well, I guess technically it's still froggy the gray. <laughs> it's not froggy the white yet. Fro frog, frog elf. should be on the big screen now right yes um, even though we got black bars on the sides um, that's just my zoom in mode right here it should still be like really detailed for you guys yep so there's there's that froggy and we're 30 degrees celsius on the bed um what is the brand of filament it is I already forgot, but thankfully it says on the spool, it is filamentum, filamentum PLA Rapunzel silver or Rapunzel gray. Um, don't remember the exact um, designation of it, but it's Rapunzel something. So one more sweep there. I think this this line on the on the throat right there. Um, where is it? This one. Um, that looks like a, like a, like an imperfection, but it is not. It is simply um, a part of the design. So let's move over to the to the other side right here. Um, let's get that focus again. There is a that is a leg for leg for you. Um, you know, I I still think this is a really really beautiful print. So someone was asking about someone was asking about lines. So these are the, the only sort of, of layer artifacts I'm seeing over here with these little pimples. Um, so there is that. All the details right there are super nicely done. Let's head over to the wings one more time. Let's get this in, in a different. I'm pulling up the HDMI. I am sorry. Boom. There we go. 
Why can't all this stuff be wireless now? Well, I guess it can, but it's expensive. So there is the wing for you guys and girls. So if you were taking things like really, you know, meticulously detailed, you could say, okay, here are a few. Right there, you can see some some resolution ripples or, or ringing artifacts or, or whatever you want to interpret into those. Um, but at least at least with this filament, those are so barely visible. I don't think we we should be bothering with them at all. Over there on the other side. That also looks incredibly good. I guess I, I, I don't even have to, to remove this from, from the bed uh, because you, you guys can, can appreciate how well it printed nonetheless. So, and the tail back there, so little tiny uh, details like that. Um, always sort of challenging for a 3D printer, but. Um, Still came out very, very nicely. So there is that. Let's see what Chad thinks. Yeah, a bit of string in the top. Uh, people kept recommending 200 degrees um, for uh, for the filament. It was the complete default G code as shipped with the um, with the ready to go um, i3, which was using 210 degrees instead of 200. So that might explain some of the stringing, um, but. Overall, it's nothing too severe. It's not like it's a, it's a complete noodle fest right there. You can speed that print up like 10 times. I think you can. Um, the minimum layer time of 25 seconds on the default print profile is rather painfully slow. So, um, I do think you, you could somewhat speed that up, yes. I really need an autofocus camera for this live streaming. I do have an autofocus camera. Actually, this one you are watching right here. It is autofocus, but um, yeah, the, the other one has the 16 millimeter lens on there, uh, which is a fully manual lens. I like the look of it, which is why I use it. Um, I guess putting the 25 millimeter uh, autofocus would be a better choice, but well, Living on the wild side, eh? Um, yeah, so as, as far as noise goes, um, as the printer is sitting on this, uh, basically again, kitchen work surface, um, which is a, a relatively heavy table top, more or less, um, it doesn't really make all that much noise. I mean, for a full size printer, it is incredibly quiet actually so pretty good job there and again just just to reiterate um the the marlin editions the um Um, the the marlin editions that were integrated into this printer are fantastic um 88% done uh, are fantastic you know the entire mesh leveling the ent which which has been back or uh, which has been integrated into the the mainstream model or upstream model um, mesh auto leveling um, the Z live Z composition I don't think that is a standard model feature um, then the the entire um, you know first run wizard functionality more or less um, 
the XY calibration uh, or XY auto squaring feature. That is that is all awesome stuff. So would I recommend it? Yes, I would definitely recommend it, especially at the at the price point of. You know what? I'm just gonna look it up because I, I keep saying 739 uh, more or less. I believe it is 739 as the kit. Let me just verify that. Um, not that I'm completely saying something stupid there. Okay, yeah, so it's 739 euros, including VAT. Uh, we're $699 plus VAT wherever you buy it, so um, import. Um, I would recommend this printer um, right at the spot today. Um, if you want to want to get the, the assembled one, it's it's nine ninety nine euros or eight ninety nine US dollars. Um, one hundred percent recommended, of course. This is after um, running a I don't know how many hours, but a long stream. It's basically only seeing that printer during that stream, so I did not have any quite a long time yet with this machine and and you know the time to to really look into and and uh look into what it does well where it might have its shortcomings um but overall what i've seen so far is really really solid um, yeah so that is finishing up the last few bits of that frog so it's printing these solid infill parts on the neck right now um that seems to fill in really well um i guess you guys have seen the oh uh, let's let's try to get this thing off nope still not coming off 27 degrees on the bed uh how is 800 affordable yes that is exactly what i was talking about with kickstarter and um Chinese printers um, they don't do any research they don't do any any you know they don't get the, the technology advanced they don't get it forward they're moving forward in the direction that we need it to move um, and that is what I would I highly highly value in the um, um, that is what I highly highly value in the uh, genuine Joe Prusa i3 Mark II. There are a lot of features that I think 3D printing needs, and uh, 3D printing needs to move forward and to become more accessible. Uh, it's never going to give you those features. It's never going to give anything back to the community. So basically, you know, you're getting a subpar experience. You're getting a, a um, basically take all give nothing experience and it's just you know eight hundred dollars for a 3d printer isn't a lot it's a great price for a real 3d printer and not like a, a uh, you guys know what i mean plus i mean this kit is so much better than any uh, two hundred dollar kit you could buy. It's just not 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 even considering that uh, take all give nothing approach. You know, just having this hardware is already better than any two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar, four hundred dollar kit. Now, if I could only get this uh, out of the print off. came off quicker than I expected.
give you let's give you guys one last good look at the um, at the Adolinda print um, in front of the um, other Prusa i3 that is still doing its job on uh, printing the the red frog. So there is the Ada Linda print um, broken loose from the printer um, in all of its glory. So it's got a beautiful back, it's got some beautiful feet, it's got a beautiful tail. So there is a, a very slight, as you can as you can see right there, there is a very slight amount of, of stringing going on. Um, again, maybe temperatures a bit too high, but overall not a great deal. And then these these wings right there, totally, totally perfect right there. Um, and of course the snoot eyes and neck part. Um, also not really anything I, I would you know, have, have any reason to complain about. Tail, again, looking very, very good. Really nice and shiny. Let's call it a dragon, okay? Really nice and, and shiny dragon right there. So, um, at this point, again, props to um, the designer of this dragon. That is a very beautiful model. Um, I, I I do not remember the exact name, but um, awesome design on the on the Adelinda print. Let's move over to the frog. Also, you know, props to to Prusa to me for that sort of a uh, of a performance out of the box. Well, okay, tripod's loose. Okay. So this frog is also going to be stuck um, to the to the bed for a while. First layer, okay. So you want to see the first layer um, while this guy cools down. So the well, we're still on the right camera. So the first layer did look. Um, like there were some issues um, teasing the outer and inner shell. So I don't know how well I can get this into focus. It might have been just an issue with the transparency of the um, of the filament itself. Um, but like like right. Right down here, it looks like there is a tiny, tiny gap, but there is actually nothing you can uh, you can feel as far as um, like infill to perimeter bonding goes. So again, really nothing nothing wrong with this print at all. And you know, if you want to compare it to something, like you can you can definitely compare it to to Ultimaker print quality. Um, Okay, moving on to the red dragon or red frog or what you want to call it? This guy. I wish I had a red red dragon, but I kind of can afford them. Oh yeah, look at that! Look at that back. Hmm. So again, here for, for scale, this is my finger. So, um, you know, these are relatively tiny layers right there. <laughs> We're gonna get a really good view of that. Oh yeah. <laughs> let's, let's switch cameras before it gets awkward. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but this guy looks pretty good as well. That there is a, a bit of an open spot on the back here, but that might just be slick theory settings. And um, 
Now just the details of how slick VR works, it, it's not that great on and actually filling up um, perimeters and making them watertight, especially on these slanted surfaces. That is something where Cura really excels and, and SlickVR still kind of has problems. But 44 degrees, well, there we go. That came off easily. Yep. Uh, which lens? This lens. So let's just keep rotating, rotating this guy around. So bottom looks good. So, so much for Z calibration and stuff. Eh. And let's move around this print. So this, this back here is um, where I'm saying the, um, the, the slick thread algo algorithm probably wasn't working out all that well and left a few gaps, but again, that is slicer related. And for the rest of the print, I think we are pretty solid. Um, I'm kind of liking the um, the filament color as well. It's it looks it looks really weird orangey on stream, but it is sort of red, just you know red. You know. <laughs> so over here you can see some ringing on the, on the leg right. Wow, that's a big hand. On the leg right there, there you can see some really tiny. Um, I don't know if it's stepper ringing or actual mechanical ringing. I'll have to look into that, but um, it's just something you're noticing. Uh, but overall, still, I mean, you, you have my you have my fingers for your scale right there. Um, at that scale, it is a pretty sweet print still. Right, and we we did because you printed so slow, we did not get those um, those hairy and molten eyes right up there okay so let's just get this one set up here very very nice all right so i believe that concludes this weekend's stream so we, I, I think we are done. I think we got everything done that we wanted to get done, um, which is kind of nice. Um, I guess the the one thing that uh, had us ending up at uh, 11, 11, 10, which is uh, local time right here. The one thing that had us ending up at, at 11, 10 was that one shipping, uh, that one shipping damage that we saw with the Y layer, uh, y, y belt holder, and having to reprint that. Um, that did set us back a tiny bit, but I mean, nothing you uh, you can't fix if you have a bunch of 3D printers around. So, where's the camera? There's the camera. Good little camera. So yeah, I guess, um, Thank you all for sticking around. Thank you all for um, joining this weekend's monster live stream. Again, I think we're like 12 and a half, 13. We were actually 13 hours in. Um, and like I said, so the, the build for the i3 should be a bit quicker if you don't have a stream to entertain. Um, if you build it in like your own little space if you follow the, follow the manual and if you take the time to follow the manual you should be pretty good um time wise um on like four and five four to five hours um overall great experience with the uh original prusa i2 mk2 from prusa research um get one at prusa3d.com um no affiliate link there no no discount code either um but I think it is still a great deal at 739 as a kit or at 999 for the um, fully assembled and ready to go version. Um, as always, thank you guys for watching. If you appreciate the stream, um, I'd appreciate a thumbs up on this video. This is going to be the... Uh, <laughs> this, this video is also going to be the recording that you're going to be able to watch on YouTube in my regular video section. Uh, the entire thing is going to go up there and yeah if you 
you know mandatory ending i guess if if you want to support uh future streams or this channel consider um dropping a dollar to on patreon.com slash toms 3d or toms 3dp um it's linked below in the video description um or use the amazon or ebay or matter hackers affiliate links um those are also appreciated and they give me a small kickback when we buy things to them um just anything basically so yeah that's the mandatory sign off so thanks everyone for um for hanging out for, for coming along for the ride i i'm really happy with the i3 mk2 i think it's a, it's an awesome printer again if you want to get one get it at, at prusha3d.org and um yeah that's gonna be it thank you for being here and we will see you guys in the next video in the next live stream in the next whatever all right where is that was always where, where is my where's my end button there it is see ya